Gentlemen, if you want to look your best with high quality clothing, then I recommend Main Street Clothiers and Custom Tailors in downtown Newcastle. Mike Caggiano is the owner, and he and his staff have been in the business for decades, and they will always give you the right recommendations. They also carry Rondinelli tuxedos. That's Main Street Clothiers and Custom Tailors, 210 East Washington Street, downtown Newcastle. Call 724-652-3851. Dymeo and Olson Law Group, where every client matters. Serving Newcastle, Elwood City, and Youngstown. Dymeo and Olson handles criminal law, bankruptcy, civil matters, workers' compensation, personal injury, medical malpractice, divorce, wills, real estate, and many more legal issues. Call any one of their offices in Newcastle, Elwood City, or Youngstown with these phone numbers. Open Monday through Friday, 9 to 5. Dymeo and Olson Law Group, where every client matters. It could be you, it could be me, it could be everything we see. Given the day, given the time, given the moment. It could be you, it could be me, it could be everything we see. Given the day, given the time, given the moment. The summer is the summer. NCTV 45. Hi, welcome to the Washington Outsider on NCTV 45. This is host Matthew Geiger from the Washington Outsider. Join us at www.washingtonoutsider.org for our latest take on the news of the day and issues that affect you. Well, today we're talking about um, the notion of being supportive versus non supportive. And in that, we're talking, I used I, I like to think of this the the Yates quote uh, tread softly because you tread on my dreams now when we talk about being supportive we don't just talk about you know handing people money or you know you know donating time or um, going out and just you know promoting people or agree even you know accepting everything they're doing or not criticizing. What we're talking about is doing things to be constructive, to instead of deconstruct people's dreams. You know, and, and this brings to the, what does it mean to be not supportive? Well, not supportive is kind of an oddball thing to be because you're basically not doing anything. And you know, that's fine. Things happen in our world all the time. And it, yes, when people don't have support for their ideas, their dreams, it makes it that much harder to go get done. But it happens all the time. And we might not, things succeed even without us knowing that they're succeeding all over the world. Certain people support. And so not support is not, it's not necessarily an issue of supportive, being supportive versus not supportive it really comes down to an issue of being supportive or sabotaging. Now what does sabotaging mean? Does it mean you actively go in there and, you know, break someone's equipment, um, criticize, run, them, run into their store, yelling, doing things, telling customers to stay away? Not necessarily. You know, there's a lot, a lot of the harm done in our world is done without thought. Most people who do wrong things they do it because they're not thinking about the impact on other people. And when we sabotage other people, it can be as simply as just, you know, criticizing them in a deconstructive way. Which, of course, criticism is not necessarily a bad thing, because there is such a thing as constructive criticism. Constructive criticism is where you engage an idea and say, how can we make this succeed? Deconstructive criticism or sabotaging is when you go out and just start saying, this is what's wrong, this is what's wrong, this is what's wrong. This is why it won't work. This is why people shouldn't support it. And it often involves doing it 
who the, are behind the backs of the people who are actually trying to do to accomplish their dreams and that kind of thing creates even big problems you know like I said it's one thing to try and succeed without support it is tough it's tough even with support but when you have people actively sabotaging you be booby trapping your efforts to accomplish something new to change things in a community to pass a public policy to work on stuff it makes it almost impossible to actually do it in fact it, it rallies people against the cause and so instead of finding a way forward we end up crushing change we end up tr crushing people's dreams we end up crushing people's lives and that's what happens when we look at um, immigration policy economic policies a lot of times we're so concerned with how this might impact me or what I feel about this that we forget how these efforts these public policy changes these people starting businesses affect others affect the people actually doing it and the reasons why they're doing it and, you know we know this the, the United States the world faces a lot of social issues a lot of problems and we can't solve them all but when we're constructive in how we approach them and supportive in the way people you know are pursuing their dreams to make the world better we make it easier for them when we don't sabotage them probably which is probably more important a lot more things can get done you know again we look at a lot of the stuff going on from these immigration uh, issues to you know just the economy's not working to changes in in you know regulation and laws in you know just things that are ha you know the all the policies throughout our world a lot of times we just see people saying well this won't work this won't work criticizing and then we have a, the other people who say well i'm going to do something even though i know it's going to affect people but we're going to exclude you and come up with an idea and that creates a very self-sabotaging dynamic and to over to overcome that you have to have people willing to come together to work to support each other and offer that constructive criticism instead of sabotaging each other you know people have visions they have dreams of what they want to accomplish they have goals but those goals you know aren't in a vacuum um, and when people supporting them means working with them helping them make a better idea helping them maybe if someone's you know, mission is going to cause you harm, you help him so you improve it so it doesn't. Um, it does not mean sabotaging, trying to shut down efforts to actually change things or to build something. Well, we need to take a little break to hear from some of our local sponsors, and when we get back, we'll finish up this conversation with a little bit of um, kind of how this can uh, really affect why, why we tend to sabotage. Um, we'll be right back. Mary's Middle Eastern Restaurant. Yes, fine Middle Eastern food where elegance and charm meet old world goodness. Great lamb, chicken, and so much more. Mary's, located on Long Avenue in Newcastle. Call 724 652 2447. Come dine with us, come dine, come dine today. If you could use some real good food, there's a place not far away. If you could use a drink or two, or a place to go and play, come to Gallo's Italian Villa today. The Crane Room is a restaurant. The Crane Room is a bar. The Crane Room is a banquet facility. The restaurant will please you time after time with their diverse menu. Ask about their daily specials. See the menu at craneroom.com. The bar gives you an abundance of choices with 35 beers on tap and always changing. Their banquet services are always to perfection. The Crane Room, located at 3009 Wilmington Road in Ashanic Township. Call 724-656-1553. 
Hi, welcome back to the Washington Outsider on NCTV 45. This is host Matthew Geiger from the Washington Outsider, WashingtonOutsider.org. Uh, please visit us for our latest uh, take on the news of the day. Um, today, we've been watching a lot of the news, and we see the Syrian refugee crisis going on in Europe, which, of course, you know, reminds us of illegal immigration inside the United States and what that means. Well, it's it's kind of interesting because for decades we've been kind of criticized, the United States has been criticized for, you know, trying to crack down on illegal immigration and our, we, um, we then send people back to their home countries and we've of course been criticized by Europeans but in the light of their own crisis, um, a crisis brought on by a war, they seem to be engaging in the same kind of practices, very hypocritical. But um, we also, this reminds us, of course, that a lot of these immigration issues are economic. I mean, for a host country, it's very expensive for a, um, an economy to absorb that many people. It's, you know, these people are worried about jobs. And, of course, that brings us back you know, to the recession and just economics in general that affect us every day, the creation of jobs, the creation of new businesses. And it makes you question, you know, what are people willing to tolerate? It kind of gives a, uh, a fear factor of um, how much people are really concerned about not necessarily welcoming new people in or seizing upon new um, opportunities or the efforts of other people out of concern that it could negatively aver affect them. You know, and so that, that kind of gets us to an overall, you know, a, a, a theme of, you know, inside the United States where we basically see ourselves when we are, could maybe confront it with other people trying to do new things that we're concerned that it's going to undermine what we're doing. Uh, let me um, just shift gears here a little bit and read off uh, a, a little uh, something. I, being poor, have only my dreams. I have spread my dreams under your feet. Tread softly, because you tread on my dreams. Now, that, that comes from um, W.B. Yeats's poem, He Wishes for the Close of Heaven. Um, it's one of my favorite poems, one of my favorite lines. And, you know, if we really listen to that last line, tread softly because you tread on my dreams. Um, what, when we, you know, we support people, it helps them to do better, but there's times whenever we're concerned that what someone else is doing is going to impact us, we tend to react in a very negative way. And, um, we tend not to be supportive. In fact, we tend to be sabotaging of their goals. And so with that last line, tread softly because you tread on my dreams, remind, it reminds us that when we, you know, we step, we're walking through the world, if we step down too heavily on other people who may be in a fragile state, who may be trying to build something new, but at the right time, if we just step on them wrong, we can crush them, even if we don't intend to. And it's a situation where I think when you look at the these immigra immigration issues, you look at the economy, people starting to start new build businesses, um, people struggling economically, struggling, you know, just in life in general, you know, people coming out of school, that if you don't tread softly, and you just kind of, you know, you're heavy footed, you walk, you know, you exercise yourself, um, you can do a lot of damage to people without realizing it. And it kind of reminds us that we need to maybe be more gentle, careful in how we treat others and how we, um, we look at them and how we respond to what they're trying to do. And that is, is something we see in the, um, just across a whole 
whole avenues, not just in politics, but throughout the whole country, is that when people are trying to start something new, when people are in a in a insecure position, you know, whether it's poverty, whether it's an emotional issue, whether it's something that the, uh, the just someone can accidentally step on us, and it's not that it's intentional, but it's just a request that we you know we do I mean there's certain people who are doing very well in life and who have always done very well we go back to the um, again the Great Recession the banking executives were doing very well and the US economy was struggling well what happened was then we they stepped on basically the American people to get ahead and then ended up causing us great deal of problems. The small communities throughout the country, you know, they have, in Washington, we have people, you know, making legislation that impacts us all on decisions that, you know, we may not even realize it, but whenever they make these decisions, without, it's so easy for them, they're so disconnected from us that whenever they make these decisions, when they step down, they crush us. They and it might not even be on purpose. So that's um, in that saying, tread softly because you tread on my dreams. It's really reminding us that people, they're most essential things. And also when we go back to the first line, I being poor, meaning having a, not having anything, not necessarily financial, have only my dreams. You know, and that last line really comes back to that people when we crush their dreams we end up doing more damage to them than we would think and so that's a, a little thought here and then we're going we need to take a little break to hear from some of our local sponsors but when we get back um i'd like to explore this maybe more and put it in a context that you know makes a little more sense in terms of what it means to support not support someone and just sabotage someone so we'll be right back here In five, four, three, two, one. Tuscany Square Restaurant, 3470 Wilmington Road, where old world charm meets today's modern conveniences. You'll enjoy their spacious, comfortable seating. Their fresh ingredients that go into making every dish, whether it's pizza, or that just right entree. Tuscany Square Restaurant, they're here to serve you. Call 724-654-3065. Whether it's a scheduled appointment or same day service, DiCaprio Carpet Cleaning offers 24-7 service for commercial, industrial, and residential, as well as fire and water damage restoration. Using state-of-the-art technology, DiCaprio Carpet Cleaning experts are ready to professionally clean your carpet today. Call DiCaprio Carpet Cleaning for a free in-home estimate. Thank you for making us Lawrence and Mercer County's largest carpet cleaner. And remember, nobody gets your carpet cleaner. Joshua Sun Rehabilitation Center. From the moment you arrive, you know that you're in the right place. Dr. John Wrightson listens first. He pays attention to detail and then makes the determination. Joshua Sun Rehabilitation. We make the pain go away. All in a nutshell, 102 and 117 North Mercer Street in Newcastle. Visit Keith and Margot Jackson for that new look. It, the latest in women's and men's clothing. Treat yourself today. You'll be glad you did. Hi, welcome back to The Washington Outsider on NCTV 45. This is host Matthew Geiger from The Washington Outsider. Visit us at WashingtonOutsider.org. Uh, today we're talking about um, the notion of supportive versus sabotaging instead of, of course, not supporting. And it's fine if someone has an idea or goal, you don't necessarily have to support them. But th when you actively sabotage their efforts, then we cre that creates a problem in your really crushing someone's ideas and of course whenever we think about approach by ideas or 
see people trying to do things. I always think of the, the Yates quote, tread softly because you tread on my dreams. You know, and I don't think you can be any more tr a truer a statement. You know, people have their, you know, their reasons, motivations for life. And a lot of times that happens to be their dreams. And without those dreams, people become very discouraged. They may not accomplish, they become very apathetic, and it hurts our entire community, you know, whether you live in a big city or a small city, because, you know, instead of being motivated to build a community, they're just sort of stagnating. And stagnation, we all know, you know, especially in economic terms, tends to, you know, lead to G G a collapse of economic success of us of um, economy sorry of economies and of course it hurts our communities or society and instead of working together in some supportive way we end up hurting each other you know a lot of times the questions is when we come to someone else's ideas someone else's pursuit someone else's dreams someone's business someone's you know whatever um, they're trying to do the questions that pop into our heads are, what does the supporting this idea cost me, you know, in terms of dollar? Um, dollar amounts, usually. Um, we also might say, I'm afraid if you build this business, I'll lose customers. If your idea takes off, no one will support my idea. And that, that tends to be a lot of reasons why we, we not only won't support an idea, but we'll actively sit there and sabotage or inactively um, we do any number of things to kind of discredit the idea to you know really legitimize our own insecurities about how if this person succeeds will I will I fail you know and that's that's from whether it's the poor who tend to not um, be very very motivated to support others in th their endeavors who tend not to be um, very uh, um, just very sabotaging because they themselves don't feel motivated to the wealthy who often you know see I they're they're enjoying privileges they're enjoying the success of their efforts and they see others you know working and they fear that that will harm them you know, and that's the kind of that's the kind of motivation that pushes people to sabotage, even when they're not aware of it. And so, you know, when it comes to these things, we need to look beyond simply sabotaging each other. We need to look at about how we can be supportive. And support again does not include um, giving money. It does not necessarily just include. I should sorry, I say um, it doesn't include just um, going out there and helping people do their things or shopping. It also involves constructive criticism instead of negative, instead of deconstructive criticism. You know, we can always find faults in everything. It's, it's just, there's a fault to everything. The question is, is whether when we do that, we're going to help address that fault, make the idea better. And that's what it means to be supportive. Now, and of course, and if you can't be supportive, don't be non-supportive. So again, um, before I leave you today, I want to again read from that Tia from the Yates to remind you that have a think about how your actions affect people, especially when they're insecure, when they're weak, when they're poor, when they you know poor in the sense that they don't have a standing, that they don't have a, they're not strong in this world, they're weak have a sense that, you know, how this, your actions can impact people. Not necessarily, and again, you don't have to be supportive, but prefer to be non-supportive instead of sabotaging. So let me read the quote again. I, being poor, have only my dreams. I have sp spread my dreams under your feet. Tread softly because you tread on my dreams. You know, and I think uh, that goes without saying, I just tread softly. Well, this has been The Washington Outsider on NCTV 45. This is host Matthew Geiger from The Washington Outsider. Thank you for joining us. Welcome to the
the Silk Road Fair Trade Market, home of those uncommon treasures. When the farmery searches the world over to pick out just the right gift, so stop by the Silk Road Fair Trade Market. You'll be glad you did. Butts Flowers and Gifts offers top quality flower arrangements and gifts for any occasion. The pros at Butts Flowers and Gifts provide exceptional customer service and each bouquet is hand arranged. Stop in and check out their wide selection of gift baskets and plants. They provide flower delivery service locally to Newcastle, Bessemer, Edinburgh, New Wilmington, West Pittsburgh and across the nation. It's Butts Flowers at 120 East Washington Street in downtown Newcastle. Call 724-652-7727 or toll free 1-800-443-7726. The Cedars is a great restaurant with outstanding Mediterranean food. The Cedars takeout menu is second to none, featuring pizza, stromboli, hoagies, their famous lamb on the rod, and so much more. So when you're hungry and you want that Newcastle taste, make it Cedars. Now with two locations in Newcastle, 827 Addis Street on the east side and 1101 Highland Avenue. Call Cedars East, 724-658-9260 or Cedars North, 724-652-7657.